It is important to know how and why things develop to better understand the basis of what is available today. So let's spend just a bit of time discussing the history of geometric dimensioning and tolerancing and the development of the Y14.5 standard. Many people say that GD&T started with Stanley Parker at the Royal Torpedo Factory in Alexandria, Scotland. Stanley realized that some parts that failed inspection would work and were good, and other parts that passed weren't working. He figured out that the parts that were rejected but still worked fell inside a circular tolerance zone that encompassed the traditional square tolerance zone established by the plus-minus tolerance. As you can see, a lot more parts would be acceptable if this round tolerance zone were used. There was a shortage of parts, so using all that were good was important. Stanley is also credited with developing the concept we know today as true position. In addition to throwing away good parts, many parts that were being made didn't fit together properly. This caused tragedies during the war. Here is one such story about the USS Tang. Fifth War Patrol. Tang left Pearl Harbor September 24, 1944. On September 27, she topped off with fuel at Midway and left there the same day, heading for an area between the northwest coast of Formosa and the China coast. In order to reach her area, Tang had to pass through narrow waters known to be heavily patrolled by the enemy. A large area stretching northeast from Formosa was known to be mined by the enemy, and Tang was given the choice of making the passage north of Formosa alone or joining a coordinated attack group of USS Silversides, SS-236, USS Trigger, SS-237, and USS Salmon, SS-182, under Commander Coy in Silversides, which was to patrol off northeast Formosa. Tang chose to make the passage alone, and these vessels never heard from Tang, nor did any base, after she left Midway. The story of Tang's sinking comes from the report of her surviving commanding officer. A night surface attack was launched on October 24, 1944, against a transport, which had been stopped in an earlier attack. The first torpedo was fired, and when it was observed to be running true, the second and last were launched. It curved sharply to the port, breached, porpoised, and circled. Emergency speed was called for, and the rudder was thrown over. These measures resulted only in the torpedo striking the stern of Tang, rather than midship. The explosion was violent, and crew members as far forward as the control room received broken limbs. The boat went down by the stern, after three compartments flooded. The submarine came to rest on the bottom at 180 feet. Nine men survived the tragedy. They were all captured by the Japanese and retained in prison camps until the end of the war and were treated by them in typical fashion. The loss of Tang by her own torpedo, the last one fired on the most successful patrol ever made by a U.S. submarine, was a stroke of singular misfortune. On her last patrol, Tang fired 24 torpedoes in four attacks. 22 torpedoes found their mark in enemy ships, sinking 13 of them. One missed, and the last torpedo, fired after a careful checkover, sank Tang. Tang received four battle stars and two presidential unit citations for World War II service. Her commanding officer received the Congressional Medal of Honor for Tang's final action. A similar incident occurred to a British ship. Questions were raised regarding why they couldn't make torpedo parts that would always fit and always work. Also, why they made parts that would measure bad, but would function. This, coupled with Stanley Parker's discoveries, were the beginning of designing standards. The first known designing standard was released in 1935. It was titled Drawings and Drafting Room Practices and was 35 pages long. In the 1940s, both the automotive industry and the military got involved with creating their own standards for drawing practices. In 1946, the Society of Automotive Engineers published a more extensive standard covering dimensioning in Curiously, the first aeronautical drafting manual. This standard was 106 pages long. 
1949, the military put out a standard on dimensioning and tolerancing. This may be the first time rule number one was written down. In the 1950s, both the SAE and military standards were updated and expanded. But most notably, the first American standard devoted to dimensioning and tolerancing was created. It was produced by the ASA in 1957 with the help of Britain and Canada. It was called ASA Y14.5-1957. In the beginning of the 1960s, again the SAE and military released updated versions of their standards. And then in 1966, the United States of America Standards Institute, in collaboration with the British Standards Institution, Canadian Standards Association, and the ISO standards, developed the first comprehensive American standard on dimensioning and tolerancing. It was called USASI Y14.5-1966. For the first time, a single national standard on dimensioning and tolerancing was recognized and adopted by industry and the military as a common authority on the subject. This standard has gone through five additional revisions and two more standards authorities. In 1973 and 1982, the American National Standards Institute, or ANSI, produced the Y14.5 standard. In 1994, the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, or ASME, became the publisher of the Y14.5 standard. Since then, there have been two additional revisions in 2009 and 2018. The current standard, Y14.5-2018, is 344 pages long, and through the hard work of the American Society of Mechanical Engineers committee members, the standard continues to be updated and improved.